The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Fuel for the Harvest. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Charlie. And this is Nathan. And today we have a special guest with us as we continue in our series, Things the Bible Never Said or Things God Never Said. We have a special guest with us. His name is Daniel, and he is from an extraordinarily small town in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Daniel, it's wonderful to have you here with us today. (laughs) It's good to be with you. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Well, I am a missionary evangelist who uh, I just kind of travel the world and tell people about Jesus. I spend a lot of my time in uh, different places uh, doing um, missionary training, pastor training. Um, uh, You know, I've got the education in the past few years where I feel like I'm able to do that without much of an issue. And so uh, that's kind of where I tend to to lean in my ministry. There are other aspects of my ministry as well. Uh, but for this conversation, I don't think those are applicable. (laughs) Sounds good, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. So, um, today's lie that we're talking about or thing that the Bible never said is you cannot judge. Don't judge me, bro. You're being judgy. We hear that all the time tossed around And it seems like it's true. It seems biblical at first glance because immediately you go, well, Jesus said, don't judge unless you're going to be judged. Matthew chapter seven, verse seven, I think verse seven is it verse seven. You'll see Oh, Matthew chapter seven, verse one. Oh, judge not that you be not judged. My bad. And for the measure of judgment that you put on others is going to be also given to you. So obviously it seems clear, doesn't it? Don't judge. But is there more? And obviously we're doing this episode. So we think there is, it's not, uh, as it seems necessarily, we throw around this phrase based on reading that one sentence, but, uh, Daniel, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, it, it's an interesting verse because, uh, we talked about it before it's used by Christians and non-Christians alike. It's very, very well read, I guess. Uh, you know, used to John three sixteen was the verse everyone knew. <laughs> uh, seems like now it's, it's, it's not, it's Mark seven, one. And so, uh, it's kind of one of those weird scenarios. Um, here's the thing I think is interesting is, is that even by using the phrase, even by using the verse, uh, you're actually judging. So immediately by saying, don't judge me, because this verse says yeah. not to judge, you are passing judgment on me. So it's almost even a self-defeating uh, idea in itself anyway. Well, that's interesting. So maybe we should pause there and say, what is judgment? to start with so or or more specifically how is jesus defining judgment here how does the bible overall define judgment because i think that's the key uh it's the key here is context the key here is all of the verses that are going on around these verses it's really easy as you guys know our listeners know uh to go into the bible and pull some random verse out of context and make it say whatever you want but it's much more difficult to understand those verses in, in the words that surround them, in the cultural context that exists, even in the, the overall story of the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. And so do not judge. Uh, yeah, as you say that, Daniel, like, hey, man, don't judge me. Well, as I say that, I'm also passing judgment. Now, how am I passing judgment? I'm essentially saying what you're doing is wrong. You're wrong to do this. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. And I'm telling you to stop doing it, to do what I think is right. So in that way, I'm judging you. I'm saying what you're doing is wrong and you need to do something different. So we could say that uh, that piece of judgment, that's a, that's a measure of what judgment could look like. What do you think? I mean, what would you add to that? The difference is, is like you say, you're talking contextually, you're talking, like I said, taking one verse and taking a whole passage and understanding that this comes from the Sermon on the Mount. This isn't just one little spot Jesus is talking. This is a giant sermon he's preaching. And so you kind of have to take it in that contextual region and and understand that it's not a command on how to judge. It's a command 
or it's not a command not to judge. It's a command on how to judge rather. Um, so Jesus isn't saying don't judge at all. He's just telling you don't judge this way, judge this way. And so when you're, when you, even when you're looking at it in that, that idea and that contextual idea is because he says immediately, don't judge, least you be judged. And then he goes down a couple of verses later and physically starts judging the Pharisees uh, saying like, don't cast your pearls into the hog pens. Don't, don't do these things. And, and when you get into that idea, uh, if you, if you're looking at it purely literally as it's written, uh, I suggestically it is basically, uh, he, he's going against what he just said a verse right. later. So you can't look at it that way. You have to look at it in a bigger, more, uh, contextual way. And, and it seems pretty clear too, even in those verses right there, when he continues, he says, um, how, why do you see the speck in your brother's eye when there's a plank or a log in your eye? Like, man, what you're doing is, is huge. And you're nitpicking the tiny little thing in that person's life. Uh, you hypocrite first take the log out of your own eye. Then you can take the speck out of their eye. So essentially he's saying, Hey, deal, deal with your life first. Then you're going to be able to go and help others and judge them to help them. And, uh, in the same way, don't lift yourself up as if you're better than them. Do it in humility. Do it to restore them. And we can see in these passages, the Pharisees would often uh, not be right with God. And then they would be going in a spirit of we're better than you to the people around them. And, so, and they're, they're setting the law, too. You have to understand at that point, they're actually setting the law that's going on. The Romans kind of gave them the ability uh, to control that area while go Romans oversaw them. It, it was that the Pharisees who were making the rules, who were setting up, this is what it takes to be a good Jew, basically. And, and so Jesus is coming in there and he's basically looking at the Pharisees and he's, he's basically calling them out in, in this moment of time, right? So he's looking at these pharisaical guys and saying, you think you're this high and mighty person and you're telling these people they need to be high and mighty. But if you look at yourself, you're not really that guy. So what it sounds like is Jesus is saying, hey, let's not judge people to the point of condemnation. Let's not judge them uh, uh, in, a, in a strict, harsh desire to just put them down, to just call them a sinner, to just call Correct. them evil. Yeah. So this is, this is a judgment to call Christians back to repentance, to call people back to the repentance that God has called us to in the first place. That makes sense. Like I... I was thinking of John chapter seven, verse 24, which I came across recently. And Jesus says, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. So he's saying there is a way to judge, but do it rightly. Right. right. And, and that's, that's what he's saying here too, right? Nathan, the, the idea is pull, pull it out of your, you've got this giant plank in your eye. You, you got to remove it before you can even know what's going on in their life. You have to know what's going on in yours. Yeah. So it's, it makes sense too with the Pharisees because he, this uh, sermon, you have to realize the context. He's talking to the Pharisees, like you said, and he's telling them, Hey, you guys, you Pharisees don't judge unless you're going to be judged. Look at your issues. And the principle we can pull out of that is judge rightly. Uh, and if you're in a stage of life where you're walking in pride, arrogance, and you're not right with God, then I think Jesus would say to you as well, don't judge <laughs> unless you'll be judged. Right. So we're, I, I think we're doing a good job defining how we're not supposed to judge people. We're not <laughs> supposed to <laughs> judge them to condemnation. What are we supposed, like, where is it okay to judge them? What, what, I think the best way to, to answer that question ultimately is defining what is the desired end result. And I think that we see that in Galatians, we see it in James, that ultimately the desired end result of good, healthy judgment is that a sinner is brought back from their wandering, a person is brought to repentance, uh, uh, someone is redeemed, right? Yeah, I mean, Galatians talks about uh, if someone's caught in their sin, restore them gently. Um, so I, th I think that makes a lot of sense, that the goal is their restoration, their freedom, their walking in victory, not their condemnation. And I think that's a key piece, is the spirit in which we're, walking this out and calling things out that are wrong. It, the spirit is to put them in the right, not to condemn them. And, and the passage in James that I referred to was James chapter five, beginning in verse 19, where it says, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, 
Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And ultimately, the, the, the way that that gets connected to judgment is how can you look at someone's life and say, you're a sinner, like you're broken, you're far away from what God wants for your life if you can't judge them? if you can't make a judgment call about them. Like, how is that even possible? The only way that that would be possible is if we can at least look at, look at a person's life and say, hey, that's not right. And, and, and we desire to see that person come to repentance. I mean, obviously, if that's the correct way to look at it. I mean, but you, you're, like I said, that there's different views on how, how we're doing that. And so, you know, we've talked about these cultural issues and seeking and, and avoiding accountability and responsibility and, and personal actions. And that's kind of where we're at. And I think that's what really you have to look at when you're looking at this verse today. Um, right. And, and that, that's it. If it happened 20 years ago, this verse would not be looked at the same way at all because of the way our culture looks at uh, responsibility and personal actions and, and all of those different things. Here, here it is specifically talking about judging people hypocritically. Um, we can go into other verses like in James where it's slander. Uh, we can go into different, these different verses, but here specifically it is about hypocrisy and what these people were doing. And so Christ is telling us in this verse, you cannot judge people hypocritically. You can't, you know, look at uh, someone and say, Hey, you shouldn't do this while you're doing something that's very similar. Um, and when you do those things, they're, they're going to basically, they're going to look at us and be, that's why, everyone says, I don't go to church. I get it all the time because it's full of hypocrites. And, yeah. you know, I, I follow the line of thought that Frank Turek follows, which is, yeah, come join us. There's room for one more. Um, but, but the idea is still the same. We are, when we are judging one another here, he's talking about doing it within the body of believers, right? We, we are to judge one another in the body of believers, but we're to do it in love and we're to do it in a way that it causes repentance. We're supposed to push uh, that the whole cultural issue, the, the seeking account of it, we're, we're supposed to push all that aside and we're supposed to look at one another and say, Hey, look, man, uh, this isn't right. And, and we're supposed to work that out with one another. Yeah. Um, I think the church has kind of failed doing that here recently. Um, but I mean, it goes so far in the Bible as to talk about like one Christian shouldn't sue another Christian, right? Yeah. Like, like this, it's not just an idea of how it's judging. The Bible tells us to judge. There's a whole book called judges right <laughs> right i mean like this is something that happens uh you but you have to do it in the right way and so i think repentance and bringing back bringing back the people who have fallen away back to and what the gospel teaches us our culture i think you're right on hitting it right on the head with where our culture is at at least in the u.s right now for those of you listening around the world it may look different but where we're at in the u.s uh there is such a culture of, of, of tolerance right now. Um, we need to tolerate everything. Like you're, you're, what you do is good for you and what I do is good for me. And you, you can't tell me that it's wrong. And so when you do, that's immediately the red flag comes up. Whoa, whoa, bro, you judge me. And uh, yeah, when the church starts to slip into that culture, it gets kind of interesting. I mean, there's a verse I'm thinking of now that I'll bring up in a second, but uh, that's, yeah, I think that's a key factor in this discussion. So ultimately, for those of you who are listening, this Matthew chapter 7 verse where Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged, he's talking about hypocrisy. If you, if you read all the verses around it, that's what's, that's what's really made clear. If you go to James, for instance, where he says, uh, do not speak evil against one another, brothers, for he who speaks evil against a brother or judges a brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. There's only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. And then he finishes with this, who are you to judge your neighbor? And as Daniel already said, the context of James is this judgment of, of slander and, and condemnation. And so as we seek to judge rightly, um, the, the, this idea emerges that we're, we're, we're desiring to see people come to repentance. We're desiring to see people uh, restored to God, not pushed further away from him. Right. Yeah. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians talks about it in, my, in uh, chapter 13. Uh, I think it's verse 11. It's, it basically says rejoice, aim for restoration, mm -hmm. comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Right. And so, so like, even at the end of, of Corinthians is talking about, look, 
the, the aim of all of this is restoration for those who have fallen short. And unfortunately, Romans tells us that we've all fallen short, right? So we kind of have to, to push that direction. That's the aim. Yeah. The, the, the last kind of big thing that's on my mind when it comes to judgment is that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, yeah. where Paul talks about it's okay to judge those inside the church, but what about those outside the church? Like, because it seems, at least from like a, a general reading of the text, like a surface reading of the text, it looks like Paul is saying, don't judge those outside the church, but do judge those inside the church. What are we to do with that? So, yeah, if you're, if you're checking out that verse, <coughs> chapter 5, verse 12, Paul says exactly, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. And... I think that's a key factor too. Who are we judging and how? So uh, when we call people to live a certain way and to change their actions, they need to have the same source of authority that we do. Uh, Those inside the church, those who are claiming to be followers of Jesus, their authority is God and his word, the scriptures. And so when we're saying, hey, this is how you ought to live. This needs to change when we're doing rightful judgment, uh, that's their authority. And we see that going on with Paul throughout chapter five, when he's saying, guys, look at all the things going on. This needs to change. This is not right. And if somebody's unwilling to repent of that then expel the wicked person from among you, he says to be outside the church, God will judge them. I've done my part. And, uh, so we actually are called to help each other as believers, call each other out, call each other to repentance. Uh, but those outside the church, uh, from my perspective, we're not called to say, Hey, you're living like, stop living this way in your behavior. It's not like that. They don't care. They're not the same authority. What we are called to do though, is say, Hey, this is the way of Jesus. Will you walk in it? Um, so I, that's how I separate those two, but Daniel, maybe you have more. To yeah. say. You know, like our, our goal in confronting the church or Christians is, is confronting those that are caught in sin. It's, it's to gain back that brother or sister, right? It, it, yeah. It's not really trying to hurt them. It's not really trying to do those things to restore them back to us. Outside of the church, things change a little bit, right? Um, we talked about it a little, you know, basically this idea that you can't ask somebody who's not in your family to live by your family rules. So I don't allow my kids to do certain things. I can't expect someone else and their family to do those things just because my family does. So uh, I completely agree with the, the idea and the sentiment that we can't go out and judge the world by our own rules because they're not part of our world. And they not only will they not understand, but they won't care. But that doesn't mean that we can't go to the world and express the gospel, which will let them know at some point if, if uh, the Holy Spirit moves upon them, and they will know that those sins are happening. Right. And that's just as confronting as, uh, as being, as being judged in some ways. Um, this idea that uh, I know it's happened to me before where, where when I was outside of the church where somebody just came and knocked on my door and said, Hey, I need to pray for you. And I was like, Whoa, like, Whoa, buddy, what do you think is wrong with me? What's the, um, but in the end of the day, it was just love. It was this idea that he was like, I love you so much that even though you don't agree and you don't believe, I want to pray with you. I, I, I want you to be a part of uh, this family. Um, so I, I agree that we should not go out and, and lambast people with, uh, the Bible. You know, I, I come from the, the Bible belt in Oklahoma, like you said, a little town called non in the middle of nowhere, uh, maybe 30 people here. Uh, but the idea is still the same that, that when we're looking at it as a whole and we're trying to walk out, taking our Bible and beating people over the head with it doesn't work. No, I got, that's not something that's going to work. So pointing out every single sin that is, is in every single person's life is not going to work, but loving them opens up doors that we can't even possibly yeah. imagine. We see this with Jesus at the woman at the well. We see this with Jesus eating with tax collectors. We see this on the cross with, with the, uh, the man that, that gets to go to heaven just in that moment, right? This, this guy who totally deserved to die, who totally deserved to go to hell. But just because Jesus was there and he understood, Jesus didn't, didn't tell him he did anything wrong. He just suddenly understood it, right? So we see this throughout the Bible. If we just present them with the gospel, if we just present them Jesus, it, it, it'll be enough. 
it, right? it yeah. should be enough. And, that, and that's the, that's the really fascinating thing about the gospel, right? Is it is by its very nature confrontational. The, the yeah. message of the gospel says you're broken in desperate need of a savior. And there is no way for you to gain access to that savior except through Jesus. Like that's an extremely confrontational message. Yeah, it's absolutely. Extremely judgmental message. But ultimately it's that, that kind of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, that loving judgment that, that brings people to repentance and ultimately to a saving relationship in Jesus and uh, a completely changed eternity. And I, I think, too, it's key that uh, so when we're with believers, our goal is restoring them from their sin to walk in victory, to have that fellowship with them, to help their lives forward. We're not coming with a spirit of I'm better than you, but rather, hey, I've walked this out. Let me help you out. And that's that Galatians 6, 1, restore a sinner gently. Um then we've got outside the church, like Paul says, hey, it's not my business outside the church. So outside the church, we're to proclaim the gospel. And I think of Romans 2, 4, godly kindness leads to repentance. So if we really want to see people respond to us, it won't be hitting them over the head with the Bible saying, well, I can't believe that you yelled at your wife that way. Like, you need to stop that. God wouldn't have you do that. And they're going, dude, I don't even believe in God. Why are you telling me what to do? Get out of my house. Uh, no, godly kindness will lead them to repentance. And then as they're a believer, we say, hey, man, this is how God has called us to live. And here's why. So um, let's pray that he'll give you strength, but it's time to change. And uh, I think that's a key difference for us to understand. So judgment that is con full of condemnation, not what the Bible is okay with, not at all. You can't find it on any page of the scriptures. Judgment that ultimately, like a judgment call that leads people to repentance, a judgment call that says, hey, uh, especially within the body of Christ, a judgment call that says, hey, you're broken, you need Jesus to fix you just as a brother, I'm coming to you and saying, hey, this is an issue, that is okay, but, and then judgment to those outside the church, uh, we're not supposed to judge them, especially not with this condemn condemning attitude because he they don't fall under the same authority they don't believe in the same jesus as we believe so why does why do they even care but what we are supposed to do is re share the gospel with them share godly kindness with them and allow the holy spirit to be the one who convicts them and so i don't know if that if you guys feel like that summarizes it at all what were any final words before we close uh, like i said for me, it, it, I, and we go back to this every time we talk, Nathan, uh, like context is king. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what they teach you in seminary. Context is king. Uh, practice, you know, reading all of it, not just a verse at a time. Um, and, and that's this case. And most of the verses that you're going through in this series revolve around that idea mm -hmm. of reading the context, knowing the culture, knowing what's being said, and applying that to your own life through the eyes of the Holy Spirit and who wrote it. Right. So. Amen. Context, 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 the three rules for interpreting the Bible. So uh, this, this, this podcast is called fuel for the harvest so that as you get out to impact people in your world, you'll have more fuel to keep going, more tools in your tool belt. And hopefully these are some tools for you as you consider how you engage your believers, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and how you engage those outside of the faith. And we hope you're encouraged with that. Uh, another note, when you read the scriptures, context. So when you're reading these word, words, judge or judgment in various books and various chapters, read what's going on. Uh, they mean different things, not in the simple definition of the word, but in the context of how do you apply it. They mean different things in different places. So read, read the chapter, read the, the, the paragraphs around them, and you're going to find yourself better off in, in your understanding. So uh, man, Daniel, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. I appreciate you letting me be on. You're a blessing. Yeah. Is there any way, Daniel, if um, people wanted to get in touch with you and your ministry, we know that you travel and preach. You're, you're part of the uh, friends and partnered with us at Forge. But if people wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Uh, I'm active on all social medias. You can look me up on there. Just Daniel Engel. It's with an I, I-N-G-L-E. Uh, or you can, if you want to email me, you can email me. It's daniel at danielengel.com. 
Awesome. Thank you again. And uh, if you guys have any further questions about this podcast, we know that it's, or this particular episode, we know that it's kind of a difficult episode. Uh, please feel free to email us at fuelfortheharvest at gmail.com. Anyway, we hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless.